as an Asian American in jazz, it has everything and absolutely nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us because we're just looking at black and white musicians, mostly for the history, and Latinx musicians. But it has everything to do with us because the story of jazz is a story of blackness and whiteness battling. The story of racism in the United States is the story of how a culture is othered, appropriated, and sold. If you look long enough, there's a lot for the Asian community to understand about why we need to stand in solidarity with blackness and understand that it's not something to be feared because it's whiteness that teaches you to be afraid of blackness. We're at the Calvin Summer Jazz Workshop, which is something we started about 10 years ago. I've been a teacher here for 18 years. This year, the faculty that I've hired, uh, the entire staff is AAPI. They're all Asian. We talk a lot about stop Asian hate. This is a perfect opportunity to showcase just how good and skilled we are. I've never seen more than one other Asian jazz faculty in a camp, right? But I see a lot of students, which is really interesting. In, in the jazz realm, there's really not too many um, Asian American jazz musicians. Usually you see, you know, I, I wanna make a differentiation between like Asian and Asian American, right? Like. Uh, you see a lot of people that come here to learn about the music and they, they stick here for years and, and really perform. But that's, that's a little bit different than like, you know, growing up here in America and then being identified as Asian. Usually a little bit different experience there. So there's not too many Asian American uh, jazz musicians on the scene. I, you know, I can really only name a couple. So having an old Asian faculty for a jazz camp, I, I think here in the States, it's very rare. I grew up in Taiwan, I am a Taiwanese, and I moved here in New York, to New York four years and a half ago. And so I'm very used to just surrounded by Asians, because <laughs> that's um, Taiwanese people, you know, like they're all Asians. I think the background of how we grow up and the experiences that we had throughout the whole learning the perception of the world and like other people, how other people view you is a little different. When I got here thinking about, oh, I am actually an Asian playing this music. I didn't really think about that because like when I was in Asia, in Taiwan, I'm just a jazz musician. This is what I do, what I play. There are quite a few Asian students that play jazz. I've seen that time and time again, but to enter the field as a professional musician is just not something that is thought of as an option, I think, for most Asian Americans, right? You know, I mean, you just don't see any Asian Americans in music, period. So it doesn't matter whether it's jazz music, even classical music, to be honest, right? You have a lot of fantastic, you know, pianists and violinists who just stop after they go to college, you know, and they get a degree for a job that pays a lot more. I guess like in my part, you know, in particularly East Asian help, households that I know of, uh, especially my own, uh, oftentimes you're geared more towards uh, more academic spaces where it's like, okay, this path is the most secure and that's what we know works. And oftentimes it's not being a musician, it's not being an artist, a creative. Um, and, you know, for the longest time, I was like, I felt like I was the only one that was pursuing anything like in the creative field because I really didn't have that many other Asian friends that did other artsy kind of stuff before, right? Yeah, it's, it's something that I've definitely struggled with uh, growing up, just feeling like, yeah, I'm like the only one. Um, but I think with you know opportunities like this that Victor has created, it's a powerful message when you just see so many like creative Asian people. It's um, it, it really helps to break the mold of like, oh, you know, they only do this and they only do that. I'm building the things that I really wish I had. I, I think the single biggest thing that I wrestled with that I really want my kids to not, not wrestle with is how to embrace and love yourself. I went through an entire period of time where I'm not, where I wasn't enamored with being Asian. You know, like I thought of myself as wanting to be white. Early on, I really said, you know, what I wanted to do when I played jazz was literally was because I wanted to tie, I wanted to defy a stereotype. Right? Like, oh yeah, what can I do that's the least Asian? You know. Right? I didn't see any 
thing at all that was like specific to us, right? If you're an Asian American, who do you look to? What's the sound of Asian American music? If you have representation, right, in a creative field, the audience will come. But if there's zero, right, then everything goes sideways because no one knows where you're supposed to be, right? So you'll have a little, you'll have little pockets of Asians that are into every kind of art form. Jazz is no different. You can say, how many Asians are on the hip hop scene? How many Asians are honestly in the pop scene? How many Asians are in country music? How many, you know what I mean? Like all these categories of music just don't include us, period. For many years as a jazz musician, you're oftentimes put in the space to be like, you know, learn about like black history, learn about like how jazz was formed. And a lot of times you don't see like uh, last name Lee or Lin in those history books. So um, you start to question yourself, like where do I belong in this space? You know, like how do I fit in this picture? And why is it important that I fit in this picture? Something that uh, someone like Bernard Harper, a really fantastic jazz drummer himself, um, he often talks about, yes, this music was created by Black America, but it's for everyone to put, have their input and to share their story and for everyone to um, kind of support that. And that's what happens inside the music. That's what happens on the bandstand. You know, we're always there to support each other. I'm not afraid to say in front of the audience, like straight there, I'm like, I'm a Taiwanese American trombonist, you know? And this is, I really embrace my culture. A lot of my songs are, um, have, I, I usually refer to like some kind of Taiwanese culture or like I have one that's named after Aboriginal tribe in Taiwan. And it's my chance to really like, just show people like, hey, you know, we're equally as uh, human as you are. You know, we, we share a lot of the same, um, you know, kind of trials and a lot of the same celebrations. You know, it's, it's a human condition. Learning how does music form, you actually grow more respect like towards this music because it came from being oppressed by other people and they try to survive under that condition, but still manage to produce something beautiful, you know? So for me, that's humanity, you know? And it doesn't really matter if you're black or white or woman or man, you know? It's the humanity and res resilience that people try to make something beautiful, even if it's under not so beautiful condition. Kind of like the way I see Asian American, like Asian kind of perspective within the music is oftentimes we're thrown into a mix that is unfamiliar with us and something that uh, is not necessarily ingrained in our culture. And so a lot of times we're coming from like an outside perspective of like, oh, what's, what's going on here? What can I do? to help or to forward the messages that come with the music. For me, learning the history and respecting that history and respecting Black American people is so important because it's their roots, you know? Like, I'm not gonna play this music and be like, this is my music. No, this is from them. So just really capturing that spirit and respecting that and learning this music in context. But at the same time, I'm searching myself too. Like, who am I? Like, what do I want to say? And what do I have to say? I think like my contribution to the music um, is an act of solidarity, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of also a call to action for my own community. It's not very often that you'll see, um, you know, like Asian Americans going into spaces that are predominantly black. You know, we're oftentimes communicating with uh, other communities all the time as musicians. At the same time, we go back to our own communities and we also enrich it with our own contributions. You know, my, my own contribution that I've known so far, like I really tried to build 
a community, especially within the Taiwanese American community, um, to really look outside of their own culture and be like, hey, this is great too. And like, you know, we can all get together and really enjoy this uh, community together. I mean, to me, the connection is this idea that if you play jazz, you have an obligation to tell the stories of the people that came before you, not just play the music. To me, in jazz, what you got to do when you listen to, and you play in the music and you want to take it seriously is that there's a history. And then you're not just talking about the music of Miles Davis, and Louis Armstrong, Sarah Vaughan, Billy Holiday, Count Basie, Duke Ellington. You're obligated to understand the kind of lives they live, you know in the heart of racist, segregated, legally segregated in America, right, in civil rights. There is an obligation that you have, if you really want to be right, right, to understand where that's coming from and how it connects to the present day. And even as an Asian, you're like a total outsider. You can even approach it even more objectively, right? You can actually see, wow, how did jazz wind up in the colleges? Who are the professors? You know, what does jazz actually wind up telling you about the state of America? And how can you learn about how, you know, white society has treated black society and how it treats us as Asians? Thank you.